charter schools create bureaucracy for accountability. Your current instrumentality law adds bureaucracy without adding any more accountability to our results. So this might surprise you that I've come from Minnesota to, to suggest something to you and invite you to consider this. But this is what I'm going to ask you to consider. Either pass this legislation and create a true, real charter school law in Wisconsin like the other United States. Or I can ask you to consider repealing the law that you have. Because your existing district-controlled schools will actually function better without the added bureaucracy of authorization. They don't need it because they're not charter schools. And as for the genuine charter schools in Milwaukee, consider making Milwaukee a charter district on its own, like in D.C. or in New York. Thank you, Senator. Uh, I guess the first thing I want to talk about is, uh, you know, we're talking about Minnesota law and how this is Wisconsin. Usually I pivot towards Minnesota on a lot of other issues, whether it's health care expansion, marriage equality. Uh, next on those issues, that I'd love to have a senator from Minnesota, but not, not necessarily on this issue. Uh, so I was uh, reading a few things online. I came across a report from the Institute on Race and Poverty from the University of Minnesota Law School that states that a 2008 analysis of charter schools in the Twin Cities metro area found that charter schools have failed to deliver on the promises made by the charter school proponents. Uh, it also goes on to highlight issues with segregation, issues of achievement that is below that of traditional public schools. And, you know, if we're going to go this far, if we're going to take chartering this far in the state of Wisconsin, I don't think the model should be replicated on, uh, on one uh, which does not produce greater results than what we already have. I think that we should see an example of a grandiose scheme that just takes education to an entirely new level. I mean, this is no, it's not a small deal right here. You know, this, this is huge. This is going to change the scope of the hiring process, the, the way school districts currently look. This, there's going to be a, a, a huge difference if a bill like this is passed. Uh, and I don't think that should happen if we don't see results that are at least, I mean, you know, if we're not saying 85%, uh, you know, 90%. If we're going to go this far, I just personally feel that wasn't a question. That was just a, a leading statement. And uh, I guess. I can actually respond to that. Yeah, please. Yes, that's fine. Yes. Yeah, please. Okay, sir. Uh, first of all, I want to just make you, you mentioned the Minnesota study there. What I'm here representing today, the pioneering story emerged out of Minnesota, but I am representing national chartering because the, the law is, is now across the country. So every state is different. But I will just mention this. In, uh, there was also a credo study in California that showed that uh, actually the students of color were performing much better than their peers in district schools. Um, and that's a credo study. So you can find a study that will you know reflect whatever you wish to, to, to have in chartering. And I can uh, I think we have a testifier who can give more of that information afterwards. So I just wanted to insert that. Yeah, I, I just you know, want to mention it. You know, you've been from Minnesota at all. But, um, but I guess another issue is with, um, with actually the, the schools as a whole. I mean, are we looking at uh, buildings that exist? Uh, buildings, are we, are we doing a conversion? And in the testimony you have about, again, authoring the law, uh, you talk about your own um, communications firm, but I also think that it's of interest to know, or may I ask, is there any association with real estate services, uh, financing and building uh, public schools, charter schools? Uh, I'm just on the Charter School Development Corporation website, mm -hmm. which has you on the front page. And you all consult and fee developer services, real estate services for charter schools. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to mention that. Um, you know, you, you have your books. You, you're, you're, you're telling us, you know, about what's going on nationally with charter schools. But this is important. I mean, it's like the guy who comes to town and tells people they need to form a band, but nobody has instruments. And in his trunk, you've got a bunch of guitars. And guess what? People in town buy guitars because they want to start a band. And that's kind of what I feel like is happening in, in, in a sense because it, this is, I mean, it, it's, it must be noted that this is what you do. 
Mr. Chairman. Uh, Representative, I'm sorry, Barnes? Barnes. Thank you, Barnes. Thank you, Representative Wright. Uh, Representative Barnes, let me, let me fill out a little bit more. In answer to Representative Wright's question, I don't think I actually stated on the record, I am not a registered lobbyist. In fact, when I left the legislature, I said I never would be a registered lobbyist. <laughs> so uh, I actually was for a nonprofit for a while, but no, I am not one now at all. Um, secondly, um, the uh, reference you made, sir, is uh, I am a volunteer board member of Charter Schools Development Corporation. The vice chair. Vice chair of the board for uh, five years which is a charter schools facility financer, the largest non-profit financer of charter school facilities that helps charter schools to do that work. And the reason I joined that board is because I view facilities financing as one of the biggest problems that uh, our charter schools are having across the nation. I am a non-profit board member. I was a non-profit board member of the National Alliance for Public Charter Schools as well, so I will disclose that. Uh, yes, I am very much about trying to support the conversation in charter. And, and I agree, there's nothing wrong with yeah. being a, a, a non-profit board member. I think it's just you know, information that would have been yes. helpful. Yes, and I should right. mention that when I said I self-published my book, the Charter Schools Development Corporation helped me to do that. They were my co-publisher, and I paid them back now, and that is the relationship. That should have nothing to do with this conversation today because I'm here to help to provide information that that book provides you that might be helpful to inform the future. It's, the only disagreement is that it, it would you know, be helpful you know, just to know. I have no problem person. disclosing that. So. Right, right, right. <coughs> now, if, I, would, I mean, we had to pull it out. <laughs> and that's my only thing. Like it wasn't just given to us up front. You know, I mean, you're you're giving us information about the schools that your organization builds and finances. Uh, if, if I'm wrong, please correct me. I no, I'm I'm proud of my work with right. you because we uh, some of the facilities we've done across the nation have been uh, wonderful uh, nonprofit facilities yeah, that have helped children to learn in very good good. Uh, you know, I mean, have the to learn. Right, I don't, I don't disagree with the level of work now. Right. Thanks, sir. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you, Thank you, Mr. Chair.